Well, I, certainly at the beginning of Hazel's uh, entrance, yeah, there's a lot of funny stuff. There's some great one-liners and she has some great put-downs. I've got to say, without giving anything away, as the story progresses, there's not always going to be lots of laughs and fun. There's some fairly mm. miserable stuff in store for her. But but at the moment, yes, she's, um, she's certainly full of life. They make us fall in love with you and then something horrible is going to happen. <laughs> you'll either end up under a tram or you'll get ill or something will happen where you'll break our hearts. Some, well, something <laughs> sad will happen. You know, that's that's life in, in kind of, you know, continuing dramas, as, as they call them. Oh, it's not soap dra- anymore. They refer to in the industry, you know, I think, if I'm right in saying, as continuing dramas. Oh, good for them. They've always got their head up the backside, so haven't they? <laughs> let's be honest, they take it far more serious than we do. Because all we want, really, is to be entertained. Exactly. A good bit of telly. You're at work all day, you want to sit down of a night and watch something entertaining and, uh, and well-made. And I think Emmerdale sums that up for me. I think it's extremely well-written. They do have some lovely comedy stuff in mm. it. I mean, I love all the stuff that Marlon and Paddy has and, and things like that. So they, so they do. You've got to have a little bit of light and shade, haven't you? You don't want it all hmm. grim and and what have you. But also, there's going to be big storylines. You know, I was reading one of the papers saying, oh, you can't always keep having all these big, huge disasters. But at the end of the day, that's what you know soaps do. There's got to be a big event, and um, as long as they're not too outlandish, i.e., aliens landing <laughs> and taking major characters off the planet, <laughs> um, then you know the viewers can go along with it. So, so and I think that's what Emma Dale's just got the pitch right, personally. What's it like living here and being here? I've only been here for six weeks, coming up to seven weeks. I'm absolutely loving it. I got the hang of the loop road. <laughs> Took a week or two. Good for you. Um, I had to send out for supplies <laughs> after 17 times. Now. But I've got that one sus now. Um, I had one day off a couple of weeks ago and I uh, took my daughter and we went to Whitby. That was mm. lovely. I had the best fish and chips I've ever had in my life, which is saying something because I've had some fish and chips over the years. Um, and I'm just, I can't get over how welcoming everyone's been and just really, really nice and kind. And the people I meet when I'm out shopping and what have you, not just store detectives, I've stopped doing all that nonsense now. <laughs> just people with the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, 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 I've stopped it now. I'm regularly early money, so I've, I've had to stop it. But everyone's just been so lovely and welcoming. And uh, I've been to some lovely restaurants. And so I want to do a little bit more exploring now mm. when I get another day off. I'm gonna, I haven't been to Harrogate yet. I wanted to go there, but it was a Sunday and it was absolutely heaving. Mm. And everyone said, you've got to go to Betty's Tea Rooms. Anyway, there was a queue from Betty's Tea Rooms to Cardiff that day so that weren't going to happen um, and also I want to go to York I've not been to York yet but uh, so I'm very ignorant like a lot of people down south I didn't know how beautiful the county was but I'm determined to see some of it yes everybody who comes on to this programme to talk about Emmerdale says oh it's friendly is that just showbiz nonsense or are they genuinely welcoming the majority of times people say that it is absolute showbiz nonsense. There might be someone, there's usually someone in any <laughs> office block, there's always someone drives you mad or you can't stand the sight of. Sorry to say, no, there isn't on Emmerdale. It really is exactly as everyone has, has already said to you in the past. I was made to feel so welcome. It's a very different way of working to what I'm used to because at any one time there are four different directors doing 16 different episodes um, on, on all different days. So you have to work out what day you're in doing what scene with what director and all that so it's it's a it's a hard thing to master and that won't necessarily be in the same order will it as the program no no it's all over the place and then sometimes you can be out of the village or you can be in the studio and you think you've just got one scene in the studio Mm. in fact there's two studios working at the same time they help you as much as they possibly can everyone on production but at the end of the day as a grown up you still have to work out where you're meant to be and what scene you're doing Pauline are they paying you well? I worry about you because you deserve to be paid at least a million pounds a year because I mean all this work for a lady at your time of life let's face it you know you should be having the good life now shouldn't you? Oh I know yeah I had a hip replacement last year you know but can I just say I've I've wangled the the comfortable stool in the wool pack Have you? Yeah yeah I sussed that I tell you ask company you can't get nothing over on us there's one that's got a little back to it and if you get on set first of course the director's saying oh Pauline how professional you're always first on set I'm thinking it's only because I'm going to grab the comfortable stool so yeah I've got the comfortable stool that's sorted out now they're looking after me very very well we get fresh fruit put in the green really? room and Let me yeah, make a yeah, note of this so what should oh, I be really? demanding so fresh oh, fruit I don't know fresh fruit yeah white okay. gardenias white in your gardenias, dressing room yes puppies yeah puppies was it Maria Carey or whatever <laughs> who's the one I wanted <laughs> Mariah Mariah Carey one of them when do you remember becoming Coming funny, were you always funny? Um, well, I think my teachers would have said when I was a kid, yeah, I was a bit too funny for my own good. I mean, I do agree with you about comedy. It's all about 
timing. <laughs> um, and, and it is really, it, it truly is. And that's something, because we did so many episodes of Birds. Can then, I nick that one off you? you I'd like it's to... yours. Go on, you have it. <laughs> I'll do that three times next week. Um, also, because you have a studio audience coming in, there's no point, car- you might have a funny line coming up. There's no mm. point carrying on if the audience has started laughing at something prior to that. So you'd have to listen to the audience and time it. And that, over the years, obviously, of doing birds for 10 years, then, you know, you're going to get better at it. But it, but comedy is all about time. And I went and saw Michael McIntyre last week, and he was absolutely brilliant. And, you know, dealing with the audience and, and all what have you. And, you know, stand-up. I mean, I could never do stand-up, not in a million years. That would be my idea of hell. But the people that are good at it, my goodness me, I've got right. Take my hat off to them; it's fantastic. But what's the difference? Because when you're learning your lines for birds or for this or whatever, it's still material. I think that Michael does it in the same. I mean, it's still a monologue, isn't it? At the end of the day, I've got. I mean, as far as Hazel's concerned on Emmerdale, they have written some smashing stuff for her. I mean, there's some really, really good, good dialogue. Um, and and you know, hopefully, as I say, you just give it the natural rhythm that you kind of put to it, something. Mm. And there's hardly been any changes that we've had to do to it. So I really don't know. I mean, you know, let's be honest. What's funny? It's such a kind of you know, some people on telly and my daughter thinks they're brilliant, and I don't, and vice mm. versa. So it's just so it's one of those things. And the thing is, it can't be too edgy. I mean, Emmerdale's cosy, isn't it? I mean, they push the boundaries with some of the stories, but you're not there to offend. I think some of the other soaps have tried that, Hollyoaks and even EastEnders now. It's really not about that. It's about community and it's about people, isn't it? I think you've got. I think the people that make these programmes have got a certain responsibility, and I'm putting on my parents' hat here. You know, at the end of the day, it is 7 o'clock of an evening, and at the moment, Emmerdale have got the, the drug story regarding young Holly, and I think that's got to be done in a responsible way. Um, but, you know, also they're going to show the, the, the misery and and all what have you that that what happens when there's drugs involved so so i think that it's a kind of even <clears throat> even stevens thing sort of thing and and i think they've handled that particularly well mm. i'm known for being shocking and i'm going to say something to you now and i don't want to offend you because if you were to leave at this point the bosses would be upset because they're all out there waiting for you to say oh wasn't he wonderful okay um <clears throat> hang on are you okay yeah, have I'm a swig of your cup of tea, tea. I oh, grew up. it is lovely as nice. well. Absolutely gorgeous. Isn't that amazing? You get a cup of tea. Nothing. They've brought me nothing oh. this side of the desk. Um, I grew up watching you on Birds of the Feather. And uh, if you're easily offended, please switch off now because I don't want to offend you. But I have to admit, Leslie Joseph did turn me on a little bit. That's okay. Is That's that all right? right? That's absolutely fine. I don't think you were alone in that. No? No, no. She was a bit of old vixen, weren't she, Leslie? Yes. But and a bit she scary. Loved the young lads, and uh, yeah, you know, within reason, obviously not too young. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, so yeah, no, that's. But it's good that you're actually kind of coming out with that. Yeah, now. I felt like I needed a bit of you know on air counselling from you. I'm glad that's okay. Yeah, no, no, that's we can fine. move on. Yeah, yeah. That's I okay. genuinely love that program. I never missed an episode. I tell you why. As a kid growing up, it was a bit naughty. But it was still within the boundaries, and I could get away watching it. And my mum and dad had let me watch it. But there was always that overtone of something muckier going on behind the scenes. I think it, yeah. I mean, definitely, there was saucy little bits in it and what have you. But the way I always looked at it, you know, your child, I've understood what we were saying, or they didn't. It went straight over their head. Mm. If they went straight over their head, then no I'm done really you know and if they got the joke or what the kind of little bit of rhyming slang might have meant then they knew the word anyway um, and I can't say there was anything particularly offensive that I wouldn't let my do she's 25 now that I wouldn't have let my child watch at the time um, so so yeah no I think they did know it was quite saucy and we were a little bit naughty but it was all in the best possible day That kismet doesn't happen very often with a sitcom, does it? Where it works and could work again. Um, I'm going to ask you the question that everybody asks you. And I know Leslie, she was on the programme just a few weeks ago at Chelsea, and I had to ask her then, when are you coming back with it? And she still has a belief one day it will be recreated. What do you think? Well, first and foremost, we've never been asked. We've never actually been asked to to get back together and and do it again. So it's rude to kind of, you know, assume that we will, unless we're actually asked by the BBC. Um... I personally think we we quit when we did. We did 101 episodes. We did it for 10 years and it was very much of its time. Um, If they came up with a really good idea where these three women are now in their lives and it was such a good idea, yeah, of course, we'd love to get together again because we had a great time. But you've also got to be aware sometimes you've got to know when enough's enough. Mm. And I think we quit at the right time. and, And because we quit when we did, people still really 
love it and talk about it and maybe if we'd gone on and on and but what on. about Doreen coming in the wool pack or something she doesn't need to say anything <laughs> just wear a really no you don't like that idea <laughs> you could you? you could have Leslie just in the background I don't know just walk past the window or something she could wear one of those belt skirts yeah. again you know a couple of inches and just, just mince in and mince out you nobody could, had noticed well exactly <laughs> who's to say yeah we can wangle Linda in a part mind you Linda don't like countryside she never has like it brings her out in hives so you won't get her up here <laughs> When All I right. said to her, you're coming up for a girly weekend, she went, no, last time I was up there, Yorkshire Ripple was on the prowl. So I think you were right, Marilyn. <laughs> I, think oh, he's, wow. I think he's put away. Look, we're going to come back with our remaining moments with Pauline Quirk next, the star of Emmerdale. There's no question. Um, I've got so much to get to next. We'll take a piece of music and we'll be back with Pauline Quirk. Um, I want to go to a few things that you've done other than Emmerdale. I mean, Celeb Master Chef, you did, and you did very well. And again, um, your tongue's firmly in your cheek a lot of the time, and that gets you through bad times, doesn't it? I, did, I, I mean, I didn't do terribly well. I got I got as far as the first bit, but I loved it, Alex. I love cooking, and it for me that was my idea of heaven, you know. And it, to to go off to the um, professional kitchen and and all what have you, and I did. Except I had a bit of a mistake. Um, when they show you the table full of all this stuff and you've got 50 minutes to cook a meal, there was a little bit of a hiccup when I didn't actually know what a... It was a mango, apparently. I didn't even know what it was. Um, I've only ever seen them sliced in Sainsbury's and, and what have you. So um, they had to tell me it was a mango. But no, that to me was good fun. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Moving on to stage fright, I was reading in your notes that you get very, very nervous before you go on stage. Is it the same when you go before camera or is that a totally different thing? Um, it's slightly different. I'm still, yeah, I'm still slightly anxious in, in front of uh, the camera, but it's the audience that gets me in a state. And, and when we were doing birds, I would be physically sick before every episode. And it, and I still obviously have nerves when I'm doing stuff, but in the back of the, your mind, you know, if it goes wrong, you've got a chance to go again, which, of course, you have in the studio with the audience. But, you know, the, the seats in the studios are particularly uncomfortable. The poor audience have probably already been in a coach for two hours to get to you. <laughs> You don't want to kind of overstay your welcome. So mm. we try not to make as many mistakes as possible. But um, yes, I do suffer with nerves, but I don't think that's a bad thing. That's all right. It's a few nerves. You've had so many great hits over the years. And the, the thing is, you make it look so easy. How much of an actress are you? Because you know the greats, it seems like it's almost in you and it's just an extension of you. Do you take mm. that as a compliment? Absolutely. Because it's yeah, meant I mean, as people one. say to me, oh, it's like you're not acting. But I am. That I suppose what I try to achieve is to make it as believable as possible, you know. And and there's certain. I mean, I've got children's drama academies up and down the country now. And we've got we've got over a thousand children at them. But that's what I'm trying to get across to the children. It's about making it believable, you know. So so yeah, that's, that's to me that is a real compliment. And that people come and say hello to me in the street and whatever you and talk and just say. Especially up here, they've been really like, much more chilled. They just go, oh, yeah, I hope you're having a good time, and then get on with their lives, yeah. you know, not kind of um, go mad. So so yeah, I think to think for it to come across that I'm actually not acting, that I am just sitting at the wall pack having a chat with whoever the character I'm with is, is a huge compliment. Thank you very much. You talk about the the interest in you being up here do you have the news of the world poking their lens through your letterbox and things like that do you get harassed uh no uh i mean there's been we have uh, some photographers outside the studios but i think they're there on a daily basis sort of mm. thing and they know i'm they're just snapping people going in and out uh no no one's taken a blind bit of notice of me which is lovely um and i've managed to be in all the supermarkets i've been cramp point Sainsbury's, Costco. I'm thrilled I'm living near Costco. So <laughs> it's no, everyone's just been really polite, well mannered. They'll come up and say hello and say, oh, you know, I hope you're having a good time in Yorkshire, you've been well looked after. And as I say, the whole northern hospitality thing, I've never mm. quite understood it until I've actually been up here. And it has, it's just been amazing. So glad to meet you at last because you're one of those people, if you don't mind me saying, who embraces what you do and you're proud of it. I hate those actresses who try and say, oh no, I was never in Birds of a Feather. It was a very small part of my career and then I went to the RSC and then we had a lovely time and nobody's ever heard of the things you've done since. You are proud of it and that's um, nice. So yeah, I've got, I love telly. I'm, a, I'm an avid telly viewer and, I, and the things that I've done over the years you know, are the things that I'd, I'd watch, if mm. you know what I mean. Even if I weren't in them, they're the kind of things that I, I'd like to watch. So, so I say, because I love telly, I, I mean, I know actors that don't even really watch telly, and I don't understand that. Um, and I, as I say, I love my telly. Pauline Quirk, I love you very much. Thanks I for coming on. I love you too, Alex. God bless. Thank you.